First Kings chapter 12, verse 3 to 14. New King James Version, please. That they sent and called him. Then Jeroboam and the whole assembly of Israel came and spoke to Rehoboam, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy. Lighten the bothersome service of your father and his heavy yoke which he put on us, and we will serve you. So he said to them, Depart for three days, then come back to me. And the people departed. Then King Rehoboam consulted the elders who stood before his father Solomon while he still lived. And he said, How do you advise me to answer these people? And they spoke to him saying, if you will be a servant to these people today and serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. And he rejected the advice which the elders had given him and consulted a young man with him who stood before him. And he said to them, what advice do you give? How should we answer these people who have spoken to me saying, lighten the yoke which your father put on us? Then the young men who had grown up with him spoke to him saying, Thus you should speak to these people who have spoken to you saying, Your father made our yoke heavy, but you make it lighter on us. Thus you shall say to them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's waist. And now, whereas my father put a heavy yoke on you, I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scouches. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day as the king had directed, saying, Come back to me the third day. Then the king answered the people roughly and rejected the advice which the elders had given him. And he spoke to them according to the advice of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scourges. 16 to 19. Now, when all Israel saw that the king did not listen to them, the people answered the king, saying, What share have we in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel. Now, see to your own house, O David. So Israel departed to their tents. But Rehum reigned over the children of Israel who dwelt in the cities of Judah. Mm -hmm. Then the king Rehoboam uh -huh, continue uh -huh, stoned him with stones and he died. Therefore king Rehoboam mounted his chariot in haste to flee Jerusalem. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. Can we see verse 4 in Message translation, verse 4, verse 14, and verse 16 in message translation. Verse 4, your father made life hard for us, walked our fingers to the bone, give us a break, lighten up on us, and we will willingly serve you. And went with the advice of the younger set, if you think life under my father was hard, you haven't seen the half of it. My father thrashed you with whips, I will beat you bloody with chains. 16, when all Israel realized that the king hadn't listened to a word they said, they stood up to him and said, get lost, David. We have had it with you, son of Jesse. Let's get out of here, Israel. And fast from now on, David, my man. Mind your own business, and with that, they left. See that in the presence of God. As I lay the foundation of this scripture, I know that what you have read, you have understood in a number of things. Now, we know a yoke. One of the meanings of a yoke is a long piece of wood which is tied across the necks of two animals, such as an oxen, in order to make them work close together when pulling a plowing or, or when plowing. Now, another definition of yokes is that yokes are anything that makes life hard. You know, at times when we say yokes, some people will be thinking, what is this yoke we are talking about? Yokes is anything that will make your life hard, make your life difficult, make your life unbearable. That thing becomes what? A yoke. Do you understand that? It is also an immense oppressive force. Anything that is oppressive, an oppression, a force, a burden, or an enslavement, that is a yoke. And in this scripture, Scripture, we got to see that yokes can be put on people by people. From this scripture, it is not, you know, at times when you are praying yoke, you think it's the devil alone that is putting the yoke. A human being can put a yoke on you. And that was what happened in this scripture. And the person that put the yoke on them started with King Solomon. King Solomon started by putting, making these people work hard, work tirelessly. If you can remember the children of Israel in Egypt, you remember that's the kind of thing that happened to them as well. When Pharaoh began to put what hard burdens and yokes on them, making life difficult for them. And as long as he made life difficult, as 
as when they complained, the more they complained, the more he wasn't what they carried. What am I saying? I'm saying that in this season, as we talk about all yokes must break, when you meet yokes, you don't go to negotiate with yokes. You don't try to talk with a person, let's say a yoka. A yoka is the person that is, a, that is yoking you, that's put you in a yoke. You don't start trying to have conversations about your yoke or try to, see, 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 when problems come, that's not the time to cry. Crying will not change your situation. Uh, when you try to negotiate and explain your situation or complain, it will not change it. These people went to Rehoboam thinking they could reason things out with him, but you don't reason things out with a yoka. I don't know if you understand. When you meet a yoka, it's not time to reason things. That is why sometimes the negativity you are facing is still there because you are still talking nicely to the situation. You are still trying to understand the situation and get the situation to understand you. And at times you lie on your pillow and you cry. Eh, eh. That crying has to stop. The more you cry, the more you make the enemy happy and the more you make what you are going through increase. Have you noticed at times after crying, after crying, the things get worse. It doesn't get better. Why? You don't negotiate. That's not the time. You, that is not the time to come and meet a yoke. Yokes do not just go away because you asked it to go away. It won't go away because you asked it to go away. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It doesn't go away just because you asked it to go away. You don't negotiate terms of contract with a yoke. They went and met him and they said, you know what? If you do this for us, we will serve you. And he looked at them and said, I don't care. You, this service you will serve me. Whether you do it, whether I reduce it or not, you must serve me. So they were trying to negotiate terms of contract. We are not negotiating terms of contract. Today, I have come to raise angry people. I want you to be very angry at that situation. Because the Bible says, since the days of John the Baptist up until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence. And it's only the violence that will take it by force. Can someone say, I take my victory? Oh, I cannot say, I take what is mine by force. Oh, you're not sounding like you know what you're saying. Say, I take what is mine. You know that thing you have been waiting for this week. Better say it like you have. Say, I take what is mine by force. Uh. I take what is mine by force. Uh. I take what is mine by force. If you believe you have taken it, let your amen be the loudest. We come to, we, what we do is that we enforce our authority. We enforce who we are. The second thing about yokes is that when you meet yokes, there is one thing yokes understand and respond to, and that is rebellion. Rebellion. And that is why the Bible, that's why I wanted us to read to the point where they rebelled. What does it mean to rebel? Rebel means opposing that person that is in authority. What does that mean? Meaning that when you are being yoked, whoever yoked you has authority over you. Whatever is, if it is sickness that has yoked you, sickness is having authority over you. Anything that is plaguing you has authority. You know what happens when someone has authority over you? The thing begins to control you. You don't want, you want to go out today, but your head starts spinning you, so you have to sit down in the house. But what you wanted to do, you had things plans to, but because of that headache, bad headache, bad waist pain, leg cannot move, you sit back. Who is in control? It is the situation that is controlling you. That is what happens when a yoga comes into your life. It comes to control. But rebellion says, I oppose you. Ayaka shakata. You must come from that place of opposition. I cannot allow you. So the next time your waist pains, you tell your waist, what? Kind of, come on, get out. I'm in control. I'm in charge. Luke chapter 10 verse 19 says what? In Luke chapter 10 verse 19, where the Bible talks about uh, he has given us all authority to tread upon snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the powers of the enemy. Who has the authority? You have the authority. Why have you now given the authority to the enemy or given the authority to the situation? Today, do I have people that are ready to take back the authority? Can you rise up on your feet and say, I take my place. Huh? I take back my authority. I want you to think of that challenge uh, and look at it. I point up, I point and say, right now, uh, right now, uh, I take back control. I take back control. You do not have control over me. Anything that is controlling me, that is not God. Today, I command you, break by fire. Break by fire. Scatter. Let your aim at thunder. Let your aim at thunder. That is why in Genesis 27 verse 40, when the Bible will tell uh, about Esau and Jacob, up. And the Bible says, it is when you become restless that you will break the yoke from your neck. Message translation says, when you can't take it anymore. When you can't take it anymore. When you come to that place where you say enough is enough. That is when you break out. Then CSB translation says, when you rebel. When you rebel. 
You will break his yoke from your neck. I need people that are going to be rebellious. Rebellious to the situations that are holding you down. And you say, you know what? I will not give you space and I will not allow you to hold me down. Ayakata, the first thing to do if you are going to rebel is that you will make up your mind. It starts from the mind. It starts from the mind. You know what happens to people a lot of times? They say, I do not take it anymore. But it is just from their head. It has not gotten to their heart yet. At times we say, I am not doing again. I refuse this thing. This negativity is coming from your lips. It has not gotten to your mind. When it gets to your heart, that is where rebellion starts. Because at that point in time, you look at that situation, eyeball to eyeball, and say, get out. And that's that scripture where the Bible says that they talked to Rehoboam in verse 16. Message translation. Let's look at message translation. And they said, the people say, get lost, David. In our English today is get out. Get out, David. We have had it with you. We have got, it has reached here. That thing you're going through will keep staying in your life until it gets to this place. When it gets to that place and you can't take it anymore, then you tell yourself, eh, eh, you see this matter, I will die here than let it continue. Jacob spent the whole night praying one prayer. It had gotten here. It had gotten here. He spent one night on one matter. Can you spend a whole night praying one matter? It got here. Enough is enough. I will not stop. I must get that thing. When you rebel, look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, it's time to rebel. Tell your neighbor, it's time to rebel. You know what happens to the ox? And that's why Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27, when he talks about uh, the anointed, the yoke is broken. He says, some translation says, when you become fat. NIV translation says, when you become too fat. Too fat. That's the word, too fat. You know what happens to an oxen? If an oxen, they tie an oxen with a yoke. If the oxen starts to grow fat in the neck, what will happen is that that yoke will become too tight and it will have to break. Have you ever worn a clothes that is tight? You added weight and your clothes became tight and you were walking on the road and the thing did a nice embarrassment. And for you, the man, you know the area the thing tore in. And when the tear comes there, or you know, and you are trying to manage yourself, or for you, a lady, the thing tears in an area that he should have never thought in. Do you understand what I'm saying? Why did he tear? He didn't tear because the tailor didn't sew it well. He did not tear because the material was bad. He thought because you had become what? Fat. You had added weight. And God is saying, you see, another thing about rebellion is that if you are going to rebel, if your yoke is going to answer you, you must grow. You must grow. Growth is important. If you are going to, if that is part of rebelling. Rebelling means I will grow. You don't just rebel by your mind. Please don't forget the things I've said. When you rebel, you start with your mind. Rebelling starts from the mind. After the mind, then you now do what? You grow. When you grow, there are things that you don't need to pray about. They will just fall off from your life. There is a kind of fire you will carry that sickness cannot stay in your body. Who understands what I'm saying? There is a way you will grow that there are situations that will just leave you. There are, do, are there people here that there are things you didn't pray about. May have been habits or addictions you didn't even have to pray about but because you grew in the word, because you grew in prayer, because you grew in your consecration. One day you just notice I no longer do these things. You didn't pray about it. You did what? You grew. Can someone say I grow? Can you look at your neighbor and say I am rebelling? Say I am rebellious. Let your amen thunder. Let your amen thunder. And he said Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here, Israel, and fast. Do you know what it means to get out? When you are getting out, it means you are leaving a place. So what he was invariably saying, or what they were invariably saying, was that let us leave this place. If we leave this place, we are moving to a next level. Once you move a place, the next place to get to is your next level. So what you do when you rebel is that it moves you from your current place to where? To your next level. Ayaka So they said, you know what? It's time for us to do what? It's time for us to move. Can someone say it's time for me to move? Can you look around your life and things that are afflicting you that you don't like and say, I am moving right now. I'm moving right now. I'm moving right now. Oh, I can't hear you say, I'm moving right now. Because you know what? That next level, when they say they were leaving, your next level is still part of what? Your growth phase. It is still part of your growth phase. So it is time to do what? It's time to move. Ayakasha, I pray for somebody today. You see where you are right now. Ali Bakata, in the next seven days,
days, uh, people that knew you, they will not recognize you again. Uh, they will not recognize you again. You are leaving that location. You are leaving that place. I don't know, there's a business, someone in business, uh, your business location right now, you don't even like the premise where you are, and you have been wondering how you move. I don't know why God is saying it, but you see today in this service, Ali that before 14 days, uh, you will get a better location. You will get a better spot uh, for that business in the name of Jesus. Uh, receive it with the loudest amen. Receive it with the loudest amen. Uh, those that thought they knew you in seven days, uh, they will not recognize who you have become. Uh, they will not recognize who you have become. Uh, as your amen will turn in this second half of the year, Arakata, because all yokes have been broken, uh, I announce Ayakata, your yesterday will never look like your today. Your yesterday will never look like your tomorrow. Arise by fire. Arise by fire. Arise by fire. Can someone say, I move by fire. I move by fire. 20 of you, Mark Atala, this week, may you enter a next level. Uh. Whether it's in your spiritual life, uh, move to your next level. Financially, move. Uh. Career-wise, move. Uh. Business-wise, move. Uh. Let your amen make it your reality. They said something. We will serve you. We will serve you. They were ready to serve. But you see my take is that they were ready to negotiate. They were ready to get into a partnership. Reduce this yoke, we will be servants to you. God said something to me when I got to this point. He said there are some yokes that are, we are currently on, that is currently holding us. We did not put ourselves there by ourselves. It was somebody that entered an evil partnership on our behalf. Your forefathers said something. They wanted something. They said, give us this and we trade with this. And that is why you are where you are. Trade. A trade took place that you were not even aware of. Every day you're fighting against delay. Every day you're fighting the firstborn in our family. First daughters, last born, this one. Why is it that this thing happens in our family? And an evil partnership took place. Maybe they needed something at some point, years when you were not born. And they said, you know what? If you want this, you will give us this, you release this. And they did that. They are dead and gone, but that is still what is afflicting you. You see, I don't care what kind of yoke that one is. Uh, wherever you arise up on your feet, no longer shall our fathers eat our grape. There is a scripture for it. Uh, and the children still to be set on edge. I don't care who went into partnership, evil partnership, demonic exchange for your life and that of your family members. And that is why I want to stop, but I need you to understand. Have you been married to a family and they say, have you noticed that in this family there's this thing that happened to, you know, people, you know, does it, it looks as if I'm the only person, you don't understand what I'm saying. Who understands what I'm saying? You just, you just say, you know, you enter a family and they just say, you know, in this family, this is what usually happens. When did it start? Somebody did something years ago that nobody knew about. I don't care. I am kneeling on this altar of fire. Hey, the God that breaks covenants by the blood of Jesus, Eliko Batayada, as the Bible has said, it shall no longer be said that the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. It shall no longer be said that you are going through an affliction, you are going through a negativity because of what your forefathers did. Let your amen thunder. You didn't hear me, it was a prayer I made. I said, it will no longer be said that while you are going through what you are going through is because of something your uncle, your auntie, your forefathers did. Uh, today we decree whatever was done uh, without your knowledge, uh, let it break by fire. Let it break by fire. Let it break by fire. And I want to make this prayer. God just put it in my heart now. He said you're praying for the ones they don't know. And he said there are people here that have done things. They have gone into covenant. I didn't plan on saying this. I heard it clearly. They have actually done exchanges for the next generation because of something they wanted. I will not tell you to come out, but per adventure you have done something, knowingly or unknowingly. That is how people join occult. They go and they say things. You finish saying things. Tomorrow you don't know the one they have said that is following your children. You don't know the one that is following, you know, your family. 
and that's how you tie people's destiny. I remember this the man in the Bible that I keep remembering, Hezekiah. Hezekiah, after what he did, and Isaiah the prophet told him that say this thing you did, this king of Babylon will come and take everything from you. You know what he said? And, and they told him that it was not going to happen in his lifetime. It will happen, you know, when he's dead. He said, it's fine. Since it's not my lifetime, it's fine. What kind of wickedness is that? So because it's not your lifetime, you don't care what will happen to the next generation. Some of us, it is out of pressure we have done the things we have done. And we felt so pressured and we just wanted relief and rest for ourselves. Forgetting that you have children that are still going to grow. And you have left things, battles that they will fight. Today, mercy is finding you. Whatever it is that has been done. Oh, because it is all yokes, all yokes. These yokes, we, we do not have an explanation. Whether we enter them knowingly or knowingly, it is all yokes. By the mercies of God, I command a ye keeper, whatever covenant you have entered into, knowingly or knowingly, I command it to break by fire. Church, your amen is not sounding loud. This is deliverance for a family. This is deliverance for a generation. Let your aim at thunder. Let your aim at thunder. Today I announce all yokes are broken. All yokes are broken. All yokes are broken. You are free in the name of Jesus. Whatever is due, you receive it. Whatever is that miracle answer, you have been waiting for, receive them now. Carry them now. Carry them now. Carry them now. Carry them now. This second half of the year will be back to back testimonies, back to back celebrations, back to back congratulations because all yokes are broken. Enter your rest. Enter your rest. No more battles. No more battles. The battles are over. If you know this is your Rema word, let your amen thunder seven times. Take the oil, take the oil. Let's take the oil. We dedicate our oil and we decree it ceases from being used for ordinary purposes. It carries the power of God, the fire of God, and your hands being the outstretched arm of God as you place the oil on your head. It is that outstretched arm of God that do it valiantly. Take the oil, put it on your forehead. It is that anointing, the oil that breaks yoke. As you put it on your head, the Lord says, all yokes are broken. By the anointing, all yokes are broken. One more time, by the anointing, all yokes are broken. Let your amen be the loudest. Amen.